She's here today to present a lecture entitled The Complete Dancer. Would you please welcome Miss Lorraine Barry. Good afternoon. Um, it is a great pleasure for me to be here. And as Klaus said, it, you know, I don't feel I have enough time to be nervous because I have 30 minutes to talk about the complete dancer. There are so many aspects to being a complete dancer. And um, what I thought today that I would do for you is, is that I would um, take a couple with me onto the floor so that then here, all of you that are here have three people to actually look at as we actually go through some of the exercises that we would do, first of all, before we actually even take a step. And that would be then getting to know our bodies. So I'd like to introduce onto the floor Doman and Monica. Thank you. So to be a complete dancer, I personally feel that it's very important that you actually know and understand your own body. What we have um, is an amazing technique book, which is a great support system for us, and we can look back on it, it's always there. We also have body mechanics, and the more you know about your body, then you join that with that wonderful technique, and then you can be, you're able to put in your own artistic impression and then create your own style of dancing. And that's what I love to see, is the creation of many different styles of dancing. And if you look around the room today, we all have our own creation on. We all wear different clothes, yes? We know some people like to dress casual, some like to be more classical, sophisticated. There are many different styles. And in the art of ballroom dancing, that's what I want to witness, is more styles, more individualism. But of course, keeping within the boundaries of our technique, because they are the roots of our ballroom dancing that have been left for us, and they're built upon each year as new champions develop. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to actually just stand on the stage, which is rather difficult for me now because I have a microphone in my hand. Oh, but now I have a new thing. <laughs> Excuse me. This is exactly how you want it to go. Nice and smooth, no problems, you know. <sighs> here we go. So stand either side of me, please. So the first thing that I'm very, very aware of are my feet. The only part of my body that actually has, well, not literally a contact with the floor, because that would actually be my shoes and the sole of my shoes, but are my feet. So therefore, I'm very, very aware of feet. So I want my feet on the floor. And then I want to be able to use them. So I'm very aware of actually pulling the floorboards, pushing the floorboards. So I pull them behind me and I push them in front of me. If I want to go to the side, standing on my right foot, wanting to go to the left foot, I'm aware of the right ball of foot and the toes pushing the floor slightly to the right, and that allows me to then move myself to the left. Here, opposite, I want to go to the right, I then push that floorboards under the left foot, ball of foot and toes, and now move it. So the feeling for me is that I'm moving the floor. I'm moving the floor, using the floor all the time. So my feet are very important for me that they're actually in my shoes and relaxed. And I do believe that this is where the gentlemen of ballroom dancing have the advantage over the ladies, because these shoes are rather comfortable and these shoes are not as comfortable. So, and also the lady contends with the heel. So therefore, it makes it even more important that the actual ball of foot and the toes. If I want to rise here, I will be actually pushing down to the floor, and that allows now the body to rise. And the opposite effect will happen when I want to lower. I will feel a slight push upward. So pushing down and pushing up. The next exercise that I would take is that I actually place myself on my two feet. This is what I call a perfect balance, is actually being on two feet. This is how I see and I learn how our bodies are designed. We have two feet, two legs. Inside the pelvic area, we have two hips, two sides of the body, two shoulders, two arms. So this is the perfect balance. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my body onto one foot. 
And inside the pelvic area, where the leg actually meets the actual hip pelvic area, there is a joint, and I want to actually rotate it forward and backward. And this is now how I warm up in order to start the dancing. Rotating it forward and backward. Now I'm gonna rotate that joint in, out, in, out, in, and out. And now here putting a sway action in, forward sway, backward, forward, and backward. Take it onto the other foot, standing. Again, this is a great balance, a great check on your balance. It tests your balance that you can actually be on one foot as well as being on two. Here, again, rotating it forward, backward, forward, backward. And here, it's not the amount that you can do. It's the actual initial movement, warming up the joints inside the pelvic area. Here, in rotation, out, in, out, swaying, forward, down, up, forward, backward, down, slightly up. And already what this does is it starts to actually feel, the word is loose. It means that it's warmed up. It means that it's able to be used. Now, of course, we have got the knees. Knees only rotate forward and backward, forward and backward. There is a slight rotation in the knees, Physically, we all have that, but it's very little. Same with the ankles, only forward, only back, only forward, only back. And as I do the ankles, you can see that the knees are already responding to the activity of the ankles. So I have my feet, have my ankles, my knees, and now here in the pelvic area, the two legs. At the back of the body, Yes, Monica, if you turn around for me, Dome, and turn around. At the back of the body, what we have here is the beautiful spine. At the end of the spine here, it's the tailbone. Yes, very simple, keep it very simple. Simple is best so you can remember things. But in that tailbone here, we're all specifically designed for the tailbone now to go forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, and backward. And if I now apply that into the dancing, I would call that a frontal plane and a backward plane. Frontal plane, backward. The tailbone is also designed physically, all of us, for uh, a sway action. So again, turn around. And now here we do a sway. You only just see from the back view and from the front here. So here, that's the sway. And it's happening, again, a lateral action at the back. Now, at this time here, a lot of dancers who are looking at me, and you can relax, when they look at me, they think I'm warming up to do a Latin lesson or to actually dance Latin. But that's what I do physically in the body, is prepare all the joints in the body so that I'm now able to dance. Yes? On top of the tailbone, we come into round about the waist area. Again, this particular part of the spine here is specifically designed for turn. So again here, I'm aware of again warming that up by turning, allowing that. And again, having a mental image of it. Imagine it, image it, image that spine, how that spine can rotate. And that spine in the middle of the body has an effect on the rest of the body. Thank you. We then go further up into, again, the shoulder area. And again, we have two shoulders. And what happens a lot is, is that, again, we tend to put the two shoulders in the one space. So if we try that two shoulders in the one space, we can fall over. Same will happen, two shoulders in the one space. It now affects your balance. So therefore, the exercise here, feet closed, feet apart, Wherever you are comfortable, this is just warming up the body, preparing it. But here, you can actually now feel one shoulder forward, one shoulder back, and the opposite. And this is called a counter-rotation. And this counter-rotation is what we do every single day when we walk around. And so the naturalism of that is exactly what I want to make you all aware of, is that we have these wonderful bodies now, some of us have bodies that are more flexible than others, and most of those people get picked to go to the Cirque du Soleil. 
They've got incredible bodies and they can do incredible things. But in our world and of ballroom dancing, we also have some incredible dancers who I admire greatly for their ability to a be able to use their bodies. But I just feel that it is a subject that's slightly lacking in our learning. And therefore, I've chosen to actually deal in the anatomy and to study it a little bit. And so far, it's been going very well, except when I get to muscles. And that's extremely complex. So today, I won't be discussing muscles. I'm, my, my lecture today is to actually let you know the basic fundamentals of the body. And again, time restriction is 30 minutes. So here, starting again, feet on the floor. And at this moment in time, I'm, I love the feeling of gravity. I allow gravity to be in my body. But at the same time, I have an opposite energy. Gravity is a feeling of downwards. I have a foot pressure. And that allows me now to actually position the body. Natural position of the body here is to have a beautiful straight line that falls down from the side and it goes all the way down, right down to the center of the foot. But that's just the normal body. That's not the dancer's body. The dancer's body will actually allow for the actual upper spine to slightly rotate in a frontal plane slightly forward and therefore now the pitch changes to the actual ball of foot towards the ball of foot. So I'm not standing on the ball of foot. I am towards the ball of foot. And this puts me in a much more balanced position. Yes? So the next subject I want to talk about here is the ladies. It's that beautiful curve that the lady creates. And I feel that in our world of dancing, this curve is it's wanting to be increased and increased and increased in a static way. Now, I am very much aware that, you know, time changes and development happens. But as I said, you know, we do have a beautiful technique book, and that now is our, you know, what we can look at. It's our book, our technique of the roots of the development of dancing. And so when I look at the roots of the dancing, and I also look at the anatomy of the body, I find that it is extremely difficult to be actually creating these backward bends and losing the beautiful silhouette of ballroom dancing. And this big shape that ladies are wanting is now taking away this beautiful right arm. And I'm very aware from a man's point of view that the man is very much about his left arm and therefore, me as a lady, I'm very much aware of my right arm. I want us to have the same beautiful silhouette. So the question here is, how do I make that beautiful curve? Well, the first thing you'll need to do, Monica, <clears throat> just turn around, please. So the first thing you need to do is, again, to just understand how the actual spine works, the certain parts, the areas of the spine. Tailbone, we've already discussed coming into the waist area here, we have a turning action. Now, again, a guideline here is, again, the bra line of the lady. From that point up to the actual bone, the big bone here where the actual shoulder line is, this becomes a postural spine. And therefore, the spine now, always from the foot pressure, is now going to create a rotary action into a frontal plane. So this spine is now supporting the actual head. So therefore, relax, if you want to actually place your head in a slightly left position here, you need to activate the feet first, allow that energy to come through, and now from there, now forward frontal plane for the spine and create the head to the left. And that now allows us to keep the actual shoulder line and the two arms in dance position. So it allows then for the actual silhouette here to be maintained in relationship to where the man would be. Thank you. And what I see very much is, is that the lady is again using very much the actual head 
So she's actually placing the head behind her own heel. And that now puts a lot of pressure on the relationship of the couple. So therefore, the personal balance of the lady is affected. And if the personal balance of the lady is affected, then the couple balance now has difficulties. If personal and couple is now in jeopardy, the chances now of the actual moving balance are difficult as well. So you're already at the very beginning, you have a problem at the very beginning before you've even taken a step. So I think it's very important that the ladies of today become very aware of the actual spine and how to use that spine in order to be able to place a position. So if I take that with Doman here, I'm very aware of, again, as I walk in, it's an invitation from the man. Man's inviting me in. Now as I walk in again, I'm standing right side to right side. Original idea of that is because of the sword of the man, and that's where we have now that information of right side to right side. From here now, again, I'm using the foot pressure. You can see that pushing down allows the energy to come through the body, and therefore I can now position the spine. The frontal action comes in from the bra line up to the actual shoulder area, and now the head, it will be rotating to the left. And as a basic guideline, and you know, we, we have to give guidelines. As a basic guideline, here is 12 o'clock. Now, when I use the foot pressure, and as I now rotate the actual spine into a frontal plane, and allow now for the head to rotate to the left, if you imagine here, it's at number 10. Number nine, slightly in jeopardy, and definitely at number eight, I will lose my own personal balance. So this is just a guideline for you, but it's the awareness of the activity of the spine. And what I see a lot of dancers doing today is a, they do use the feet and legs because they need that as a leverage, but what they're doing is they're actually placing themselves out of balance, and you can visually see it, and it puts a lot of stress into the body. So that's the basic understanding of getting the body ready. Get to know your body, get to know your feet, get to know the legs, get to know the joints in the body here, get to know that spine at the back of the body. Yes, all the way up into the shoulder area, and then be aware of the head. The head is supported, again, from the, from the bottom of the spine all the way up into the head to the axis point. And that axis point, again, the joints are actually rotating forward and they can turn to the left and turn to the right. So having that visualization of your spine and of those certain points in that spine allows you to be creative in your own body. And again, everything is about practice. Take your time. Time, patience, in practice, is what it, that's what's needed. You need to have that time to develop. And that's the other point that I feel is that everything is about, I want it now, I want it now. And everything takes time to develop. So, you know, today I'm standing here with 41 years of dance experience and some of it was really hard work, and some of it was great. I had great feelings, but I also had bad feelings, and I had times where I had great difficulty, pain in my muscles, pain in my knees, and it's by having those bad experiences that it actually now puts you into a direction of finding better information to allow you to take away and learn from those bad experiences of certain things that you're doing. So the activity of the body, for me, is very, very important because we need it to dance with. So we have been left beautiful steps created for us, natural turns, natural spin turns, reverse turns, all these wonderful steps. But what I'm very aware of is what creates those steps and they're called, for me, actions. So we have beautiful actions of swinging a frontal plane, 
a frontal plane with, again, a rise, or swinging a backward plane. We also have the rotary plane, and we also have the sway plane. Now, the biggest question in dancing sometimes is, how much sway can I do? Well, that's what you have to decide. You have to decide what are you creating, what are the amounts that you want. And for me, the, the boundary is always going to be your balance. It's, if it affects your balance, then of course now I'm doing too much sway because it affects my balance. If it affects my partner, that he feels maybe I'm pushing or I'm pulling him, then it's too much. And that's where, as Klaus said, communication is extremely important. And that's what dancing is. Dancing is very much that the man is, for me, very much the designer of what it is that we're going to be doing. And then what we do as ladies is that we assist the man. He's the one in control. The word leader, for me, is a word that I don't actually use. I totally understand it, and it's absolutely fine. You know, we all have our own choices of words, but I don't use that because I don't want the man to lead me. What I want is for the man to lead himself. That's what I want him to do. I want him to be very clear of what it is that he wants to do. So therefore, I want him to lead himself, and therefore, that information will then come through to me, and then I will be able to activate my body in harmony and in relationship to the man. So if we take a little bit of, little bit of dancing, um, we don't have a big space here, but that doesn't mean to say that we can't dance in this particular space. Um, and what, what I'd like for Dom and Monica to do here is to just show you how the body will be activated. Yes, I would like you to focus on the back of the bodies and see how the relationship of the two spines are working in harmony with each other. Be aware of perhaps Doman having a frontal plane and then having a backward plane, maybe putting in a little bit of turn and a little bit of sway and monitoring and looking at Monica as she now responds to that with her body of maybe here coming forward backward first and then coming forward with again the same amount of turn and sway. So if we take a little bit of foxtrot, just have fun, swing it round. Have fun, he's like, yeah, right, have fun. But that's what I'd like it to be, you know? I, I, I told Dorman and Monica, you know, this is just about my lecture of talking about certain things and then you just gently demonstrating. This is not a demonstration, it's just having fun and letting the feet work on a beautiful wooden floor, yes, with some gorgeous music. Can we play that one? Because, of course, when they're dancing, they might have people in their way and they're going to have to change directions or do something that's not quite in that choreography. And sometimes it can be very frustrating for dancers. They're like, oh, I've got to move, I've got to keep going. But you can keep going in a very, very small space. And then when it opens up, then, of course, you can let that body go and release energy. Oh, sorry, OK. <laughs> Okay, thank you, thank you. And that's what you see today as well, is that the ability to stop or change direction, you know, is, um, is difficult. So it's difficult because sometimes the mind is set that this is my choreography, my routine, and I have to get my routine. And there's no doubt about it, we all have a routine, and therefore it becomes a choreography because you personalize it. 
But that doesn't mean to say that you're not a great dancer, that you can't actually just take a side close, a side close, or actually take a hand down. It's very easy to take a hand down while you're dancing around, so just whatever you want. So whatever you're doing, if someone was in our way, we could put the hand back up, or if someone was there, we could take it down or put it back up again. But you definitely see today, it's like, you can't take the arms down, can't take them down, got to keep the arms up because, you know, because they're all looking at us. Well, we're not looking at you all the time, you know? And we're also looking at floor craft. And we're looking at the ability to actually, you know, allow that arm to come down and allow yourself to still be in balance. It's not that if I lose that arm, I will be out of balance, or maybe it is. Or maybe it is, and then you need to go to the drawing board and then say, hmm, what am I doing wrong here? Why is my dancing so difficult? Why now do we have the masseurs at the back in the changing room? Why do we have them there doing all the neck cracking and the muscle massaging and that? It's because there's just so much tension in the body to create, and again, this is my opinion, not everyone has to agree with me, but in my opinion, it's all about creating one picture. And it's all about creating, again, as we take the position, I know you dance with Monica, we have to dance with me too. <laughs> so it's all about creating just one picture, so whatever you wanna do. So it's just one, it's like, oh, one picture, one picture. Well, I'd like 21, maybe 31 or whatever it is, I want this to be free. I want to be able to use that body. That's what the body is for. It's to be used. <laughs> and that doesn't mean to say that I'm, I'm rolling around all the time. Absolutely not. There's times when I will be doing if space permits, I will be doing that beautiful feather step that goes across the floor and the beautiful line of it and the, the lovely postural circle that the man and the lady create. This is a partnership. It's not only about the lady. The man has his role to play in this. So he's very aware of his own space. He's aware of his space here as in a postural space. And of course, he's aware of that space on a frontal plane. But assisting him here is the lady. And you'll note I use the word assisting him. If you try to help him, he won't accept it. So trust me, ladies, the word is assisting him. So here I'm very aware if I take, for example, we'll go to a natural turn here because again, sometimes you think, well, this only happens in Foxtrot, but it also happens here in Waltz. So if the man wants to take a natural turn, a natural turn is a, an action that is coming forward to the right based on a beautiful circle to the right and it becomes actually a half of a natural turn. Again, the man here is coming forward and creating a turn, and then he's gradually, over those three steps, it putting in a little bit of balance, and that balance here, again, is created by two people. Now, we're not, we're not looking to break our sides. What we're looking to do here is to create a beautiful harmony of a frontal plane, a rotary plane, and a sway plane, with, of course, rising, rising and at the end of it, a lowering action as well. And the essence of the natural turn is to show at the very end, the closing of the feet. So Doman's like, oh my God, she's putting all this pressure. Now I've got to close my feet perfectly. <laughs> this is what happens in lectures. When you talk about it, it's like <gasps> everyone starts to focus on it now. But what's very important to me here, and I will do it now, sorry. What's very important to me as a lady dancer here, to be complete as a lady dancer, is to actually look behind me and say, whoa, there's a lot of space there for me to go. And that's what I do. I'm very aware here of assisting the man by actually now working the backward plane Again, we, I can go to the inside of the turn. So here I'm assisting him as he wants to come forward. And again, he's telling me from his feet through to that lovely center. Center is based on the front of the body and by the way, on the back of the body too. And that's what we do in dancing. Everything is the center. Oh, hold on, is it there? Or is it there? Where is it? 
Yeah, uh, just over here. Yeah, it's the whole area. It's the front and the back of the body. Because again, here as I start that natural turn, we're right side to right side. Just let it go, don't, don't try. Here we go. And now I go backward turning sway. Now Dolman does and I can go forward. He'll go backward and I'll go forward. Now I'll go backward and he'll come forward. He goes back and I go forward. And now I'm gonna get to the whisk and you're gonna say, oh, what's she gonna say now? <laughs> so at this moment in time here, the promenade is the big question. Hold on a second, well, hold on. What's gonna happen? Because for me, and again, this is where everyone has to find their own, and this is mine. For me, the man now is coming forward. And again, the man will go diagonally forward, diagonally forward. And the lady will go back. So from here, and it's the energy. I'm now activating this backward, slightly backward, with a little bit of turn, with a little bit of sway, and there we are. And if we put the arms on top of that, here we go. So I'm on the man. That's where I am. He gave me a frame. I'm going to put myself on it. That's it. I'm not trying to produce myself. I'm on the man's frame, and I'm assisting him. As we exit a whisk position here, again, this is where everyone would have a question. So here, for me, I'd like the energy the energy of the man on the back of his center to move into the space slightly be at the back of him. And normally what happens in my experience, maybe not in yours, but in my experience, I feel that the man pushes into the lady and whoa, we have a difficulty. So here, I'd like the man to take his energy just slightly back and then I can swing forward. Now it changes, I'll go back, turn and sway. Good, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, gosh, it goes so quick. Well, that, that's, that's it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> There's so much. I'm so sorry. There's so much. It's about your body. Learn about your body. Learn about it, what it is that you want to do. It's all based on beautiful actions. Yes, so I'd like to say thank you very, very much to the BDFI, and I'd like to say thank you to Dom and Monica. It's not easy, but I just thought it would be better for you to have three people to have a, a visual look at, you know, with so many people being here. And on a personal note, I would like to just personally thank all the dancers here for a lot of love and a lot of support that I genuinely, you know, really thank you for um, over some very difficult times. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, I think you'll agree that uh, Lorraine certainly managed to pack a lot of information into that lecture. Please welcome her back on the floor for a very to say thank you for a very informative lecture and also to Dolman and Monica for demonstrating it so beautifully.